podcast, the one and only Warrior Class Podcast. Not like the phone is. The Warrior Class Podcast, we teach the homies. Warrior Class Podcast, won't leave you lonely. I'm about to be everybody. And I'm Nick is always taught that we clown, clown. We clown on everybody. Welcome to Warrior Class. For the teachers with ass. And you will too if you pass. pass. Now, right. this is the throws and takedowns for the street episode. Um, we touched on a couple of throws uh, before. We haven't gone to a deep dive on throws and t- takedowns, the difference between throws and takedowns, all that. So, we're going to deal with that today. Um, but first, we're going to get into some news. Uh, Peace, everybody out there. We're going to ask you at this time, you know what it is. Uh, we got new member. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly Jamming. Kelly Jamming. Welcome, to the, welcome to the Black Power Media family. Peace, everybody else. And uh, we'll give you a second to get on in. I want you to log on in. I'm just getting, I'm logging in myself, y'all. We, we all I'm Uja Sanea, Warriors. Peace, peace. Okay, I'm glad you're here to say stuff that I can't pronounce properly. I, mean, I can pronounce it, but I don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Could you translate for us, Gregory Jones, please? I sir. know what Anki is. I know what Seneb is. I, I'm not sure about what you When you put it together, it's a little good. Yeah, yeah. So um, real quick, man, something I saw an article that was, before I get to that, um, everybody, you know what season is. You should have your tools and stuff. We want to mention that at the beginning of the broadcast, go out for the prices ra- raise up when Tax time come. It's a good time to get on whatever online thing you got. Order your something. Make sure you got your edge tools, your blunt tools, and things of that nature. You got your heavy flashlights. You know oh, what I'm saying? Light light your house. Make sure you got something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need one for the house and one and some for the house on the carry. You got your light flashlights. Um now that's a great case people, that's that's a flashlight. Oh, you oh. can't see it. Got a whole, whole oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, there oh, you go. Oh. Another one in here too. That's another flashlight. Same, you know. Yeah, he like to be want to be able to see. Gotta gotta be able to see. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Um, slick stuff for your house. You know, I keep. I got little first aid packs. I think I may have another. That's that's another one. Hold hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I may have. Uh oh. Life, prosperity, and health. That's what that means. Oh, cool. There's another one. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. Y'all, y'all seen this one before. There's, there's another one. Don't show them no more. Don't show them no more. Right, just, just, I just one more. It feel good to have them back, though. Yeah, I can't, I can't, back. I can't show everything I got, but I can show you the. It feels good to have them back, boy. It so there's, there's that one. It feels good, man. And you said, okay, well, that's a lot of tools. Yes, but I'm used to wearing them. You really don't even realize you got them. Unless you know you have to use it, it. I, I never believed that so, until it was true. I, yeah, understand. One, I used to be, uh, remember back like years ago, I used to be like, How people get caught in the airport with a gun? What are they doing? But when you carry you two, you got it on you. Yeah, yeah, you carry two so much all the time. I, I, that happened with my knife, knife when I was with you. I had to give my own knife up. Yeah, I, I tell you, when I went to work that time and uh, forgot I had pistol in my uh, <laughs> revolver. Uh, on me, I said, "Oh shit!" Right? I said, "I don't want to leave it in the car," so I put it in my backpack. I didn't know the place. I just got the job. Peace rise. The day before, I didn't know that because when I where I went to get the job, I had to go through no metal detector. But the place they sent me, I had to go through a metal detector. I said, "Oh shit! Maybe they won't see the revolver." Hmm. And as the revolver is, uh, as the revolver. Is going through the metal detector. You can just see that mud. <laughs> As I, I, I'm like, I'm just gonna pay it off. He said, "Can we talk to you in the back, please?" I said, "Shit!" And that's why I wonder what kind of place is this because they were, they had me talk to folks for about two hours. And they said we can go on up to work, and then I'm working for about an hour up there. And they came upstairs and they said, "Bring your stuff with you," and they sent my ass home. So I'm like, what are they actually doing here? Wow. Because wow. it was supposed to be a place. Mm. This, this is my only factory job. But 
it's supposed to be a factory job where you're making parts, like plastic parts. I forget what they even told me it was for, but this place looked really didn't like a factory. It was a more of like a corporate building. Mm. And people working in there got suits on. Never know. So I'm like, what what is this? I mean, and they told me, you know, come with a suit. I'm in a factory. And they knew who you was before they hired you. I'm sure they did. <laughs> they did. They got rid of my ass quick. Yeah. Oh no, he's not him. He ain't gonna be bringing no cut, no <laughs> sir. Not that one. So yeah, make sure you and, and this is Phoenix where you can carry pistols and stuff. So it's really yeah, a good point. I just seen an article too where the guy had killed this killed the intruder, took his gun from him and killed him. A guy was trying to break in his house and he came to the door and the guy pulled a gun on him and he was caught. He's like he froze. And then the guy kept pointing at him. Next thing you know, he grabbed it, took it away from him, just shot with his eyes closed. Every shot went up in the, in the door. <laughs> so, hey, watch yourself out there, but keep your tools. Um, I even have stuff that, you know, maybe from my um, security days, I got these little two-way radios that's supposed to go up. Somebody said that's a potato two. knife, just a joke. That's, hey, <laughs> all, I care, potato knife. all I care is letter openers. You can call them whatever you want to call mm-hmm. I just care letter openers. That's all I'm trying to do is open up a letter. I hope I don't got to read nobody. <laughs> nah, nah, but you know, a uh, little first aid kits, you know, around if you one of those active families, you need a first aid kit in your house anyway. But for people, for me, in your car too. Yeah, in your car, I got one in my car, one in my, uh, and you want more than one if you got one, you got none. Uh, you know, I learned that from a, a wise man. Hmm. But um, yeah, man, I keep an extra bag, a little first aid kit where I train at because if you, you know, if you do happen, hopefully, God, hopefully you don't bleed in no way. If something happens and you injure, and you may need to. Treat yourself immediately. His daughter got injured in class. <coughs> she did. Some she stuff had to be. You know. <coughs> she did. It was accidents happened. It was the only one I've seen in class my nine years of training. But um, somebody uh, two fell on the floor. Fell on the floor while we were doing a running exercise. And I'm gonna say this because I I wouldn't say it then, but I can say it now. It's actually her fault because her awareness should have been where she should have seen that two fall while she was running. Well, it's two. It's, it's, it's not her it's, fault it's, by it's, herself. It's, right. It's also the person oh. should have had the tool secure enough but didn't fall. Well, well, trust me, I was mad at them, period. <laughs> I just got, but now that I'm old, I can look at it different is what I'm saying. Now that it, it, I can look at it like she should have been aware because it was in her vision and she didn't pay attention. And I saw it. Before I could say anything, bow, she stepped on it. You know what I'm saying? So that was, he wasn't this class today. It would have never happened. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know. But but anyway, the news I wanted to get into that I thought was wild. It there is a story. I did first of all, I didn't know it was illegal to try to communicate with dolphins. Hmm. Yes. Did you know that? Somebody look it up. Tell me I'm lying. It is illegal to try to communicate with dolphins and whales. Wow. It is illegal. You will go to jail. You're up to t- and what do you mean by communicate? Like swim and talk to them, or you can't go up to dolphins and try no type of communication. <laughs> you can't do that. They're coming to get you. They wow. coming to get you. I posted this today. I've been holding this. I got some stuff I've been holding because it's just too wild. That's crazy. So there is a man. The man. I don't know his name. I'm not even gonna go into all that. I don't need no the alphabet folks around me, but uh, we ain't in our time ain't completely up right now. So there is a man. He's the leading well saver. <laughs> he, he started in the 60s or 70s, I think, but he's the guy. He's the guy. The way he became the guy and stuff named after him. When y'all look this up, y'all gonna know the guy I'm talking about. It's stuff named after him now, techniques and uh, stuff. He got people to start well hunting. And certain places, got laws and stuff started. He's the guy. The way this happened, from his story and the people around him, what they say is um, that he started. Um, he, he he was training, supposed to be training animal uh, aquatic animals or whatever. And so they had this program. It was this program where they posed to train the dolphins, and he signed up supposedly some and. After about a year or whatever, he started telling people that he realized the dolphins was training him. <laughs> the dolphins and the whales was training him. He was like, basically, he was like, either I'm going crazy or this dolphin or this whale, it was a whale, has been talking to me telepathically. 
So the, he's and he's telling people around him what the dolphin, you know, is supposed to be saying. To Sydney. He found some way to communicate with him. So he built this um this um since he since he it was now telepathy. He feel like he didn't even have to be around them and he could just receive messages. Everybody think he's crazy. All right. So he well real quick, you know, whales can communicate with other whales across the planet. So it's got to be telepathic. How long did they have the information, bro? Do you know? I, I've known about it since I was in the military, so it's been a long time. Okay. It, learn about this story because I think a lot of that information Bob was talking about wasn't available until this man came around and started communicating. Mm. So what he says is he built this thing in his house. Uh, one of those things you float. I don't know the name of it. I'm, terminology is my challenge. I'm working on it. But there's the, the chambers you build where you float in the water, and it's really just a think. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? But they have those deprivation, things. Deprivation. Central deprivation chamber. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so he got one built in his friend house. He didn't have no house. He did it in his friend's friend. Let him do it. It's because he's like a brilliant mind or whatever. So his friend let him do it. His friend... Him and his wife moved in to his friend and his friend wife. So they're just looking at this shit. Like, this is crazy. His friend is the one telling the story. Mm -hmm. So he's like, he built the chamber, and finally, he, after months and months and months, he finally, all of a sudden, he comes in the room one day, and half of his face, he, he, used to, he had long hair and a long beard. He walked in the room, they said, half of his uh, head was shaved, and the other, and one side of his beard was shaved off. And they was like, you must have something to tell us, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he said, so he was like, I did it. I did it. I made contact. They like, yeah, he is gone. He's finally gone. He's finally gone. So he's like, the whale told me that I'm not going to give you the whole story because it mm -hmm. sounds too crazy. It already sounds crazy, but it's extra crazy. The whale said, look. I know, right? I know. Just listen. The whale's like, look, we can talk to you. You can talk to any whale you want. People can do this. And nobody don't, they don't want y'all to know this. Like, you can talk to us. We're going to let you prove to the world that you can do this. But you're going to have to look presentable. You're going to have to get yourself together. And he was like, I don't want to shave. His hair is long. He was a, um, what's the one? Hippie. So he didn't want to shave it. So he was trying to get used to the idea. So he shaved one side and walked around all day. Then the next day he shaved the rest of it. So they told him to meet him in some, to go to some um, beach. That was crazy. The whales wanted him to look presentable, like shaved. Yes. They told him he had to be presentable to represent <laughs> what he was going to be representing in the future. They said people ain't gonna take you serious looking like that. That's what the whale told us. I'm just saying that's what he said. That's what he said. That's what he said. The whale said, This is life, this is how crazy life would be, or not really believe it or not. So he did it. The whale told him to go a certain location a certain day at a certain time at this beach. He's never been before. He said, Go there, and you're gonna be greeted by a hundred whales. Wow. He went. No, this is from what video. Mm. This has all been this part is documented. Mm. He went there, took a while. Well, came up, came straight up, eye to eye. A hundred whales came up and came wow. up and looked him eye to eye. Mm. That's just amazing by itself. If nothing else ain't happened, mm. he told people that was going to happen, and it happened. I don't know what the, I don't know if it's true. I just know the some it happened. That part happened, mm -hmm. and that's just amazing. They said that what you said. They said they can communicate. They said it is not one well. They said there are the the, the Earth is an organism, and they like cells. Mm -hmm. They work together. It's like so any well is every well. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if we didn't have the disconnect, we'd be the same way. You know what I'm saying? A part of nature like that, like birds move, we'll move like that. And we do, we don't realize it. We still, it's group think. Well, I'll tell you, Pikea. Uh, Talk about it. Pikea is a hero of the Maori people. And they said Pikea traveled from Africa to New Zealand on the back 
and and, and Pakia is like the progenitor of the Maori people. Mm. Traveled from Africa to New Zealand on the back of a whale. That's how she moved from Africa to New Zealand on the back of a whale. So and that that was told way before this man was even born. This is in their liturgy. Right, right, right. So hey, you know, um, Gregory Jones says um, that the government has attempted to weaponize. Has the government attempted to weaponize dolphins? Peace, Black Timbo. Yes. Hey. So there's a movie called Day of the Dolphin, which is based on a, a, a true story. Uh, I don't know how exactly true it is, but in Day of the Dolphin, uh, which is I think George C. Scott plays the professor. He's teaching the dolphins to speak, like speak. He discovered that they can make sounds similar to humans. He teaches them to speak, and they got, of course, intelligence equal to human. Mm -hmm. So, uh, or more, I don't know. But uh, he's teaching them to speak. So he had two dolphins, Ba and Fa, mm -hmm. and they call him Pa. <laughs> so he's getting them to, you know, teach them to blow up. They basically want to use them like the uh, UDT team in the Navy to blow up ships and stuff, the mm. bombs, right? And so it doesn't want to do it. Uh, the, the 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 female uh, Fa, she's uh, says something. They speak simply, but like uh, Pa, Fa not kill or whatever. You say, yeah, you you're gonna kill makes her go and, and train to, to blow up the thing and, and she gets blown up too because she doesn't want to actually place the thing. She thinks people are in that ship but it's actually a training thing. Mm. And she does something and, and gets blown up herself. I don't want to tell the whole thing but the male, he looks at Pa and he said Pa kill Pa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, right. He looks because he, he tells him, you know, uh, Pa's gone, blah blah blah. And it's just looking at him and said, Pa kill Pa. And he's scared of the mother. <laughs> and so and the, the rest is that that dolphin that, that so they end up stopping the program mm. because the dolphins didn't want to be violent, but if you're forcing them and some one of them get hurt, it's gonna kill all y'all. Yes. And that was the and you didn't train this 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 dolphin to place bombs and shit like that. That was the issue. That's day of the dolphin. I've been seeing some interesting stuff. We all seen the thing. I'm sure that reel that went viral with the, the dog. What's uh, that a picture of? Said the blank is very intelligent. Is that an octopus? Yeah, the octopus. Because the octopus is the most intelligent creature right, on right, earth. Right, right, right. Now that's according to African tradition, uh, spiritual tradition. They talk about the the level of the intelligence of creatures. Uh, the octopus is first. I won't name all of them because this is a bit like it's a, like hundreds of animals they live, but octopus is first. Mm. Uh, the tree is up there. And I take the tree, the re reason I say the tree is more intelligent than humans because the tree doesn't have to speak to actualize itself. It doesn't have to say, I am this, it just is this. I promoted the secret life of plants produced by. Uh, Stevie Wonder before it's a documentary came out in the yeah, 70s. Yeah, yes, exactly. It will yes. blow your mind. It's on yes. YouTube. Watch yep. it. You've never seen anything like it. And then after that, so dolphins, there's other animal plants, what well, well, trees specifically was talking about. Humans way down here somewhere. <laughs> Smart as you think you are, our power is not our intelligence, it's our adaptability. We can adapt to anything. Because our ability to use tools. Is resiliency a part of adaptability? No, because all this animal is more resilient than us. Yeah, I'm, I'm a more resilient than us. To us too. Okay. But we are more adaptable. Mm. Right. So yes, uh watch Day of the Dolphin. I've tried to find that again, and it's hard to find. Yeah. They, they say uh true, these interactions are not only illegal, but are also potentially harmful to the animals as well as the people, according to the marine sure. mammal law. Um, and yes, they use dolphins to protect vessels from in enemy swimmers seeking to plant explosives. They use them back in Vietnam War. Says uh, the military has attempted to train dolphins to protect harbors and naval installation by identifying identify infiltrators. See, they, they long used dolphins. Funny that he mentioned that they used them back in the Vietnam War. I, I just posted it. 
who could beat Captain America, and it's got somebody commenting at the bottom with a question mark, Captain Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. But uh, yeah, so. The octopus have nine brains and have the benefit of both localized and centralized control over the action. Yes, and mm. they're gray. From what I understand, their whole body is gray matter. Wow. So. That's interesting. You know, the, 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 the octopus is incredible, man. And and my whole point of that story at the beginning, um, because I, I hope you guys look into that and research it, and you'll see, um, even if you don't believe some of the story that he has, it's so much um, fascinating things that that's proven throughout that story that you have to take as truth. Um, it's, a, it's just amazing what we don't know. If you don't know something, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So more proof to just keep your mind open. Don't be so finite in what you think can and cannot happen on this world. Because as I am still, I've seen a lot of shit. I know Bob has seen 50% at least more shit than me and not mm -hmm. even including his other life he'd lived when he was putting in work for these motherfuckers. So, man, I just, I'm just overwhelmed every day of the amount of fascin of just fascinated by the world, man, and how wild, I'm always wild. I'm steadily being wild by nature, by life, and everything. And I always keep your, your eyes open because humans can, can shock you, too. Oh, Speaking man. of well, so I used to <laughs> run, I used to run uh, when I was in the military, uh, and I was in Monterey. Okay, uh, which If you know Monterey, Monterey is beautiful. Okay. Uh, when I left the military came back to Chicago and they said, you know, what? Where, where were you at last? I said, last week I tell people, you know, I was in Monterey. I've been all over, but I was in Monterey. It was the last place I was at Defense Language Institute. And uh, I won't tell you what I was doing there, but I was at the point. And uh, people who had seen, they like, why, why the hell did you come back here? Mm. People who, who <laughs> you would think, I mean, people who for the streets, and people who are you would respect politically, I won't say their names. They were like, "Why'd you come back here?" I mean, this ain't right. Like, Goddamn, Monterey is beautiful. So I used to run on the beach. I lived a block from the beach. I used to run on the beach, well, along the beach, because I would hear the whales in the morning. So I run six in the morning. They it was beautiful. Ooh, the sounds they make sounds it beautiful. Like and so I'm running. I'm running with them in Jai, you know, and uh, we're well, not with them, but I'm hearing them as I'm running. So I know they're out there, can't see because it's so foggy. Well, this one day it got so goddamn foggy, it seemed unnatural. I mean, I couldn't see in front of my face, but I'm like, I'm gonna take my run. I run five miles every day. I'm about to, to, to I'm gonna run this five miles. I, I can't see, and this is just more training for me. But something made me stop. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa something's wrong. I felt the presence of somebody in the in the in the fog. Mm. So I stopped, I didn't move. And then I, I could just feel them moving, trying to see where I'm at. And I said uh something like you, you, you're not gonna get me, and I moved from where I was at. Oh, shit. And then they I don't know if they reached out trying to touch me or what, but they they giggled. <laughs> like that, I said, and that shit sent a goddamn <laughs> chill up my spine. The way they giggle, and I said, "What the fuck is this?" I turned around. I didn't finish that five miles. I turned around, hauled ass back. I was mm -hmm. like, "I'm fast. So they got to be fast too." And I ran back. I'm like, "Somebody has seen me running." I, my thought was, "Somebody seen me running every morning." They said, "I'm gonna get this nigga this uh... morning." But the giggle they got, it wasn't like it was something new to them. Um, I said, shit. I want to recognize this is, is Aki Fahai. I, I, oh, Akil Fahai. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, hey, Baba. Hey, hey, brother Akil. He said, I seen the screen uh, thumbnail photo brought me here. LOL. Say, I, I used to patrol the West End Park. Yes, that's years true. Ago. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, um, he was, so he was he was with uh, Jamil Alameen. Ah, who cleaned up respect, his, respect cleaned up the West End. Respect to you, brother. 
Um, speaking of, when you think of like, I don't want to, um, I don't want to make this about white people. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want this to be about white people, but it's like only black people know certain things because about us. And yeah, so well. white people ain't going to, the white people that's watching this, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but you ain't going to be able to understand this because you ain't black. So you ain't going to understand how stuff we know about each other. Like we know certain shit is too crazy for black people. It could be a black person <laughs> doing it, but it's like, that ain't the odd type of crazy. I, it's a, a video that just came out of the serial killer, famous serial We're killer. We're slowly getting there, though. I don't think about serial killer. Listen, We're slowly getting there. We already know. And a lot of us are there. We've been around. You, you go to you be around certain things. The most prolific serial killer, just so you know, uh, in Philadelphia was a black man. I can, hey. So he had a great story, though. Uh, but go ahead, go ahead. It was one serial This serial killer, he has video, and they posted some of it. And I just, I'm, I'm like, this is where Hollywood get. It's not that they're not getting this from Hollywood. Hollywood getting this from them. Like this dude was tying people up, videoing them. When they come to, it's a camera in their face, and they can see him behind. Like, like from the camera, mm -hmm. they can see him coming from from behind. Mm -hmm. He'll be doing stuff like walking on all four backwards with a mask <laughs> upside down. Yeah. Just that's like funny because they, they're in trouble, but that right, is nuts. listen. And they he just walking like this, and it's, and they just trying to get out and just 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 fucking with them and then just play a recording. A recording is playing. You're probably wondering what happened to you. You're probably trying to get out of those chains. <laughs> it's not gonna work. You're oh, probably gosh. thinking, oh my. What have I gotten into? Well, let me tell you. You're probably thinking, am I going to get raped? You're fucking right you are. That shit went off. I cannot, I can't imagine some of the shit that these motherfuckers is doing out here. Well, the dude in Philly, brother, you know. Uh, oh, man. And when I say a story, it's amazing. It's not like I, I admire it or it's no, I got you. No, so it just he they knew somebody was killing this in this Philadelphia neighborhood. Police trying to find him. He killed a person. Uh he was killing old white women. He killed a, a old white woman in this house. Mm -hmm. They go into that, he calls them, tell them you know, they find her dead. They go in the house, she's dead. While they're in the house, he killed somebody in the next door. In the house, he was getting all type of. He would kill them with with uh, their uh, stockings, and, and so he killed right next door. <laughs> he was wild. They found, they discovered that at every killing, he'd be you know outside watching. They they were like, it's it's this one dude who's always watching out there. His brother, I don't think they ever caught him. See, now you say now somebody say that was a black person. I'm like, damn, but okay, you can believe it. Now when I tell you. There's a there's a man and woman who was kidnapping people and and stitching animal fur and and skin on them mm -hmm. and turning them into stuffed animals mm -hmm. and then making them sit at tables and videoing them having dinner parties and then kill them and bury them in their backyard. It's it's like a different type of they everybody killing. <laughs> it's all <laughs> killing, but God damn. Well, Why did you think of this shit? And I'm like, well, listen to what I'm saying. This is true. This right. is and, and what I'm, I'm telling tell you, you happened. I'm about to tell you something true. So, you, I don't know if you've ever heard of Tokolosh. So, I'm, and I've been studying Tokolosh because. I'm sorry, that's Hito Turkoglu. No, he Tokolosh. Played for, he played for Sacramento. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tokolosh, I've been studying him because I'm writing, you know, the book Ox versus Scorpion. And that's set in. Uh, in Kikanga, which is me and a, uh, another author, Milton Davis, you create this world. It's, a, it's Africa, but it's only 16 nations in it, so it's our analog for it. And one is Zambulu, which is South Africa, Botswana, together make Zambulu. Mm -hmm. And, and then in South Africa, and in our South Africa, in our Zambulu, it's a world of martial arts. There's plenty of wars throughout, but this is, 
I mean, they actually like martial arts that you would think of. Right. Martial art movie, martial arts, right? And so in it, I'm writing about some tokolosh. So I've been studying the tokolosh. Uh, in the book, and Dabba My Children, you'll see a lot. So the tokolosh, they'll say they, people who spook it out, they'll say they, you know, they, they evil spirits and kill people. But that's not actually what they are. There are farms of tokolosh made where these sorcerers, they kidnap children. They train them to be assassins. Mm. This is real. They train them to be assassins. And to scare people. Oh, right. They I know grabbed about animal skins, the same thing you're talking about. Animal yeah, bones. I do know about, you, told me about, you told us about you. Did, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So they, they twist their limbs so they look like creatures and shit. Mm. They stone cold assassins. You talk about ninjutsu and shit that's the closest that in africa they got to that kind of thing mm. and, yeah. and, and, the, and the sorcerer makes a mint hiring them out to kill folks let's see yeah that, but i can respect that <laughs> i can respect that you want you sign at least you signed up for the shit <laughs> no they didn't they were kidnapped children oh well, i forgot about that part yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not that's not and they stole so the in the in the movie okay. Danny the dog, which they call Unleashed. That's what, Jet Lee, that's what they got that. We got to do our. Let's see that y'all got to support us, man. Support the channel. You know what I'm saying? You catch up, Bala Gorong. Let's get the <laughs> movie started so we can get this. You know what I'm saying? We got we got the stories, man. Ain't no stories better than the. No, ain't no, ain't no stories better than African. Stories. And I didn't believe that, y'all. I swear, it's like you 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 would think we bias. It's not that. The type of people I can't speak about, but I know how he is. You know, I'm gonna tell you what's right, what's good, and what's not. I'm, I love movies. I love. I'm gonna tell you if I like a white movie, I like a white movie. But when I got into these African stories, old dudes and what have you, I, I still remember the first time I called about it, or, or through the chat. I seen this great Asian martial arts movie, and they started doing divination. The guy got on white on with the cane and stuff. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm just learning about the Orisha. I'm like, wait, is he the guy with the thunder and the what the fuck? They copy, they copy the, the best shit that I, we see. Most of the time is our shit remixed. The best shit that you like is our usually our shit repackaged and remixed. There's a Japanese director, I cannot remember his name. He makes a bunch of horror movies, and they they, they love uh ghost stories and stuff. Yes. He said, he said, Yeah, I get uh most this is I, we didn't know Japan had that many ghost stories. It doesn't. I get those from African stories. And they probably just buy they turn, into, <laughs> they turn ain't no African in that in the film. They turn it into Japanese stuff. So we see all the Japanese people in them, and and it it seems like ancient. It seems it is, mm. but it's from stories they they took of ours and turned into stories. We could do that same thing. Right. We, just, we, we just don't. A lot of times we run from our own stuff and be, be scared of our own stuff. Uh, <laughs> now, you, gotta spook. you should respect it. So I know some authors, this one author, she hit me up. I don't know why she hit me up. She said, I want you know, I guess she wanted me to give my blessings away. She said, I'm writing this story uh, about, you know, this, this villain, Ashu, and the people that they come straight from uh, the, the mm -hmm. Christians in yeah. Nigeria who said Ashu was the devil. It's just ridiculous. So anyway, um, she said, so Ashu is 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 the is the, vil is the villain in it. And I'm looking like, oh boy. And she says, and then this the the, the hero, she's the daughter of Arshon and Thor, I think. I'm like, wait, wait, hold. So so the African guy, she bypassed Shango, who's the god of thunder. And she goes to Thor, the Viking god, the Norse god of thunder. I said that that is garbage. I just like that. Mm -hmm. I said that's garbage. Mm -hmm. I said you're being disrespectful to the traditions that you do know. People still study those traditions, not some old that you're just gonna remix and have uh, uh, black Af you know, African guys with with Norse guys having sex. With. I said that is disrespectful, and that's the same. If I said Jesus Christ has sex with uh, some Chinese guy, Wei Ling or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and you would be mad, <laughs> like you know you you're disrespecting Jesus Christ. Yeah, I said not, I would never do that because I would never disrespect what people believe in like that. So even 
though I write science fiction and fantasy, I'm not taking the guys from those right. traditions and disrespecting them. Because right. you respect people's culture. Well, and, well, and you have to, because people come and visit that ass. I'm not worried about nobody whooping my ass, but I don't want to hurt nobody. I don't want to, you know what I mean? Well, you don't have to deal hurt with their that. Feelings. Right. I don't want to right, deal with somebody angry because of that kind of thing, you know, and you, and you got people not, not staying on that. And I, I mean, that we're going to get into, let me say this. I, I just told him one of my daughters, Abiola, Abiola is known as being real beautiful and, and all that. Well, okay. That, that's, that's nice. <laughs> this dude, she met him on a dating app. One, she is beautiful, and she don't have to go to no dating app to meet mom. Yeah. But she on a date now. I guess it's easy, to, you know. This dude, his name Blaska. I'm saying his name in case anything happens, right? Because he says he's gonna kill our whole family because she wouldn't go out with him. She went out with him once. She didn't like him, so. She said, nah, I'm not going to, you know, he said, come see me. And I said, nah, you know, I don't want to, you know, go any further with the next thing. He said, what? He said, you hurt me? So I'm hurting your whole family. I'm killing them all. So let y'all know, I fear for my life. I mm -hmm. want that on tape. I fear for my life. So I have to protect my life and the life of my family. I fear for my family's life. Two, blocks good. If you come, because he, he dropped her off. They, they went out one time. He dropped her off at our house. She lives with us. So he, he Blaska, you say you're angry with her. You want to hurt her. You're going to kill the whole family and her. I fear for my whole family's life, Blaska. I want you to know that. I am in such fear that I have to protect my family to the best of my ability. Because I'm in such fear. Right. I'm in such fear, Blaska, that if you come, you're going to be in such fear with me. I'm not going to be afraid alone, Blaska. Mm -hmm. We both going to be in fear. You should will for a little while. And my fear is going to change. Mm -hmm. so my fear is going to change from fear for my life to fear for my liberty. <laughs> so I'm telling you that Blaska, and that's my gift to you. Don't come to my house. And that was And I'm letting the world know this man has threatened my home and so I'm letting the world know that I fear for my life and I love y'all and I'm just letting y'all know. Yeah. Uh, as cuz after this And yes, know, there's some crazy bastards out here I manifest. I be I be around his home a lot so you know, I hope I don't uh I'm, I'm afraid too. So yeah, I'm afraid. Talk crazy yeah, like that. people visiting. I'm afraid. You know what I'm saying? I visit Bob and I'm. I gotta yeah. be scared now. Now my sense is heightened. I'm on up here when I gotta go. Yeah. Go meet him and be right. You know what I mean? So my daughter's afraid. They may end up grabbing you know something from the house and you, you got everybody and afraid. Everybody around afraid. Here, bro. You got everybody afraid, man. Just you know, be careful. Be careful. Right. I've been trying to stall Bob because this is about throwing and going to the ground and. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we're gonna get into it. Um, <laughs> start with some waist exercise. Now, number one, difference between a throw and a takedown. A takedown works against your pain. You take yourself down because say if, 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 if your joint is locked to escape that pain, a human being would do more to escape pain than to gain pleasure. Yes, sir. Pleasure is staying on your feet. But you'll do more to escape that pain and you'll throw yourself over. That's a takedown. Okay. If I grab your ankle, which, which you're about to see, that's one of the takedowns we're going to do. I, 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 I hold your foot to the ground, press against your knee. You throw yourself backwards because you're trying to escape the pain. You don't want to get your knee or your ankle snapped. Okay. That's a takedown. A throw is I off balance you and then I put you down. Okay. You say, well, what takes less effort? Uh, about if, if you do it right, it's about the same. 
because I have to out off balance you and then throw you. You'll see in saying Greco Roman wrestling, a low level wrestler is going to use strength and they'll boom oh, suplex. Right. Yeah. Suplex the person. A high level wrestler is not using their strength, they are balancing you first. You gotta have strength now. But they all balance you and then throw. In the African traditions, 70% of what we do is based off of women. So they aren't, they, now we don't use strength. When we do a suplex, uh, which comes straight out of Lamba, it's off balancing to the nth degree, where I pull your hips to my hips, I sit back, and you fly over my head. It's, it's your hips to my hips and me sitting. So we're going to go through the science of how to do these so you understand our balancing, when to our balance to affect the throw so you're not using strength. So if you say, well, I got, you know, copper tunnel. I got my back hurts. You can still do these with your back hurt. You say, well, what are you saying? Women weak? I'm saying women, a woman who weighs 110 pounds and is five feet tall cannot use strength against a man who, let's be realistic, who is 6'3", 250 pounds. She has to have supreme technique. And that is what we're going to use now. That's the one thing in the, in the movie The Woman King they should have shown. Mm, Not yeah. just had them just, you know, busting up like men or going against the men. So that, that's nice. That, 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 that's, that's, that, that's definitely Hollywood. But they should have shown how they use their cleverness, their knowledge of, of, of physics, their knowledge of, of, of biology to defeat a much stronger opponent. That I would have loved to see. You know. But all the choreographers for a woman came with men who had the same in African tradition, from what I understand, so they didn't understand that. Teaching. Uh, let's just make them as cold as men. Yeah, they the were best, as cold. They were colder. This well, it wasn't because they were strong as men. This transition in all internet. Look at us. <laughs> that, didn't, that was massive. <laughs> we got coats on because it's cold in Atlanta, but our jacket's on, but I'm going to take this jacket off. I think I really don't want to take it off. I'm like, damn, I'm going to take my jacket off. You want to plug that up with a go. Okay, that was I, I'm like, damn, I don't want to take take my jacket off but in a minute we're gonna be roasting doing throws and stuff i'm just i'm taking mine off now before we even get into i'm it. gonna take my tools out of my pocket though okay thank you for that i appreciate it i was working with a brother one time uh it was a warrior's retreat and i'm grappling with this brother i throw him and as i'm throwing him i feel on his goddamn waist his pistol so after I throw him, I got him down. I take his pistol out, throw it. I said, dude, you locked hands with me. You got a pistol on? Mm. Oh, I, I forgot it was there. Now I accept it because I told you earlier, a lot of times you get so comfortable you forget. Right, 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 right. But I still looked at him sideways for the rest of that conference. Yeah, you got to, man. You got right. to. You got yeah, right. you, you're supposed to think a little bit better than that. Well, especially at a Warriors conference that he put together. Yeah, I mean, come on now. You, you, you got to check yourself. So... Let me take these off too, because I don't want to throw in there and my knife just flipping there and landing your head. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a crazy accident. It would be funny later. It would be funny when it happens. No, but you know, <laughs> uh, a couple of years later, after you know, we always laugh. We always build up. Laughing. Then it's funny. Bruce, put your head on the way. When that knife flew in the air, I tried to catch it and I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that. All right. So, hey, just so y'all know, when y'all are training and stuff like this and you get to our, our age, you want to loosen your hips up yes. so you can throw because all this is in your hips. One easy way is just to put your hands on your hips like this. Here's one. I'm going to give you one. So you, you get like this and all you're doing is you're going back and coming like this. And I just open your hips up a little bit. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Man, it feels good too. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, what we doing? I hold mine for a long time, like 
the relaxation to come, you feel like a little slight pain in that relaxation. Yeah, and that's that's funny because it's that's one too. It looks similar. You can do this one. You see people do this naturally. That's actually chiropractors will tell you that yeah. too. You can do that with your back. What and, we doing? And, and if you feel like a, a pain right there, just hold it for a while, and then if that pain sinks away. Good. A lot of times, if you breathe, that pain will go away. Yes, absolutely. You got to make sure. Most you of the time. Yeah, most of the time it'll go away. We also rotate our hips in class. This stretch right here is really good. We rotate the hips. Now, you can't see the feet, but we also rock between the heels and the toes. Right. And that puts you on the sides of your feet. So yes. we're massaging uh, pressure points that, that, that connect to your colon, kidney, liver, and spleen. Yes, those are very, very, very good for you and loosen up your hips and get you, you know, just quick ways to get you right, man. So, uh, so now we're about to let me make sure I got every tool out of here. Okay, your camera is so I got the holsters on, you know, so you see, when I have my, my camera here, it don't get none of this. Your camera got the whole wall, the door right here. Well, you know, good, that good you explained that to me because uh, I was like, why are they so little? <laughs> yeah, everybody else is so close. So anyway, uh, we're going to do a takedown first. Remember, takedowns work against pain. A uh, person is doing more to escape that pain. So right. let us know. Can you hear us okay? Everybody hear Bob all right? Just so now, it. yeah, because of the wait a minute, the mic's not connected. It wasn't hooked up the whole time when they was hearing this. Really? You see me mess up right probably not as good though. Right, because they let's hook this mic because I want them to hear this clear. Let's do that. Gotcha. Here y'all go. Give y'all some extra sensory right here. That's why I'm asking to because we back a little further than we normally are. All right. So one, two, we in there. You hear us? Someone said, yes, I hear you. Okay, cool. All right. Now, somebody said pancreation. So pancreation, oh, I manifesto. That was right pancreation right. is uh, Greek. So it was what the Greeks would use. It Basically, it was their mixture of wrestling and boxing. With some kicks and stuff included, right? And they would, they would wear, a lot of times they would wear the cestus on their hand. Uh, basically, it's like Sestus. it's like brass knuckles, mm. but back in those days, it was usually making stone, and they would be boxing cestus. I like that word. So that's pancreation. You have a dude now; he teaches modern pancreation BS. He's a kickboxer who did some wrestling. Mm -hmm. But pancreation, yes, that that is. Some people oh. say it's what they got from the Egyptians. Take the tube out. Um, they, they got that from the Egyptians when we allowed them in our mystery school. And, uh, uh, you know, and it could be, I don't know, but every, what I will say is when people say, you know, they got Kung Fu from, from the African, Tai Chi from the African, stop it. All cultures <laughs> are going to learn how to, to fight to survive. So yeah. let's not do that. We got some amazing things, such such so much amazing things. We don't have to lie to make ourselves seem better. Right. Our shit's good enough. We don't, we don't have to lie to make it seem better. We created everything for us. When people, you know, uh, the forms from the African martial arts. There, there, there are no forms in African martial arts, right? <laughs> we, 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 we uh, respect the snake. You know what I'm saying? That was part of our culture. And the, and the, and the, uh, Praying man, get out. That's not us at all. In fact, that don't look like us. I'm just saying. Man. And a dude did this to me in the club when I was bouncing in the club. I was fighting against the, the Tom. Right? Mm -hmm. And they, we the only folk that watch TV and shit. Mm -hmm. And so he jumps in the middle of the club. I'm whooping their ass. Mind you, I got left by the other security people there at Club Visions here, just so you know. And if you work Club Visions in VIP, you know it was you, you coward. Mm -hmm. This fool walks out the door, leaves me to fight them. He's, I guess he's like, I ain't fighting these gangsters. Mm -hmm. I have a choice. So once they touch me, it's on. But anyway, as I'm fighting them, a, one dude jumps down into the floor mm -hmm. and goes like this, and I just walk up to this. Stop it! Hit him in the chest. Stop it! Hit him. So his hand is here. Right? It's like this. 
Just go around that hand. Just stop it. Slap him and smack him with his own hand and my hand. Stop it. He looks up and smack him at the same time with you. I said, go sit down. He goes sit down. You must be my cousin. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, dude, if you try to strike me, I'm going to F you up. Basically, because there ain't no strike from right here coming straight. Everything is about it's gonna to come. Right, everything right, is gonna come like this. Yeah, everything is about to. And so, like, all I know <laughs> when he does this, he's walking around. <laughs> now, if if he tries to strike straight, he's gonna lose. That's gonna get snapped. I was boy, that's a so bad that'll be, thing. Yeah. And then it would come like this, and mm-hmm. then try to hit with his wrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and I and I would put push his palm to his forearm. And then he and really he'll, he'll tell you I caught actual I catch actual punches. Yeah, so this, this year, yeah, this is nothing. This I wish he would. <laughs> so anyway, uh, doing pain compliance now. Uh, we're gonna do loose my wrist. One from no, I'm gonna do your wrist. I'm gonna do your knee. Great. So we're gonna do it from the ground. It's better. It's better. It's better. So um, from the ground, you get say you get knocked down, or you're trying to get up. So this is me on my back. No, you're standing up. I'm on my knee. Okay, okay, I got you. So we can bring this down a little bit. Just bring it further up to. There we go. Okay. All right. Now, so what you're gonna do with your partner? Now, there's ways that you'll get into this. I can get rocks. Oh, got to my knee. Or he's coming to swing and hit me, and I can drop. Go, go here. I lower myself. Now, normally we don't go all the way to our knee. We're about to inch up, but that's going to be if your core is not ready for that and your hips, just just go to your knee for right now. Okay. But if you come to class, I'm going to be like, get off your knee. Bring it up about an inch off the ground. Anyway, once you're down, head to the outside. Don't put your head to the inside. You're going to eat this knee. All day. All right. Head to the outside. Uh. He can't get punches except rain down a yeah, you know, hammer on my not, head and, and his head punches. is hard, that's right? Strong punch. And you ain't gonna just be down here, like, hmm, what's going on? So you put your C hand, it's, it's shaped like a C. You put that right there behind his heel and push down towards the ground. Because you don't want him to lift it. Right? Lift your lift your foot up. <laughs> He can't. It's been a while it's, 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 we did this so I put my hand there and my body is leaning towards him. That that's key. Let's uh turn around about the other side, maybe. I'll come this way. Okay. I think they get a they can see the action. What you mean? If we do it from this side, they Which can turn see. Face me then? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I just backwards. I just stabbed you your kidney. All right, so we're right here. There you go, yeah, yeah. So I'm pressing down, lip it, lip it. So, see, it's, it's not. I just try with everything. Just not. Yeah. Bring it back over. Uh, I don't want you to. I don't want you yeah. to snap. Please. So if it's if it's almost crossed like that when I do that, it's over. It's bad. It's so you press that so you can't lift, and you're leaning. I put my arm up like a shield. Okay. I put my arm up like this, like you're trying to take your pace, and you just lean that above his knee. His knees right there, you may end up on it. It'll be fine, but it's better above his knee. Back up, I want you to fall and hit Bob Thank with you. your head. Okay, so I'm here. I go here. Don't let this collapse in. Keep it out and just lean forward. It's real easy, y'all. That's all you're doing. That's and, simple. And it's going to be painful because this is one motion, basically. When he drop. You're going to catch you off guard because I'm coming at you, whatever happened. Right, it's you open, down. Me. That's what it is. It's a blow. But let's say he, he hit me. I'm, oh, I'm on all fours. Like, oh, God. Grab that immediately because you don't want him to need you with this one either. So grab. That's stop. I got to think about something. And this hand comes so up. Think. And when it's hand, and I'm going to do it from two knees down now because it's the lean. I put this above his knee and I lean. <laughs> He goes down. You resist that, you're going to feel something that you don't want to feel. Yes. You know what the knees feel like. That's going to hurt a lot worse 
If you resist it, yeah. Yeah, and, but the thing is, you're gonna naturally get caved in like that. That's what's gonna happen. Right. When you do it, you're gonna cave in. The way it's done, as uh, if, if if I was doing that combatively, I would be sliding down his body. Yeah. And now that man, begins to stand right like there. Ooh, yeah, you gonna fold over? Yes, you gonna fold that's over. It's gonna snap the shit out your knee. So yes. that's a takedown. Okay, that's a takedown. When you sat and get my wrist ready, you all seen this one before, where yeah. you press out. He's throwing himself same way with down there. He threw himself back because he don't want to lose it in this one too. He throws himself because he don't want his wrist to snap. A human being will do more to escape pain mm -hmm. in the game pleasure. Now, so that's a takedown. Uh, I just want you to know the difference. We're going to do throws. Okay. Uh, first throw, and, and each throw, just remember this, your thigh to thigh. When people try throws, they may be a martial arts been doing it for years. I see them do it wrong. Mm -hmm. It's because they're doing like ankle to ankle. Mm -hmm. or calf to calf. Th this throw you'll see. Uh, this is common, right? In 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 pretty much all martial arts that have any grappling at all, they'll do this, and they're trying to throw. And if it's a stronger dude, you can't get him. Mm -hmm. That's because you just went calf to calf or calf to thigh. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Okay. Uh, first thing, so we knuckled up. He strike. I want to off balance him. First and foremost, okay. The first strike, I'm gonna take him this way. He strikes. I'm here. I'm here. Once I move that out, I come close. I don't want to eat this other hand. This stays up. This elbow comes up. Come around this way. Beautiful. Let me just have too much large work. Yeah. So he strikes. I knock that out of the way. I'm coming up. Just in case he uses his hand, or if he uses the hand, doesn't matter. I'm coming Crash. up. I'm eating. So he eats that, and I'm grabbing him underneath here. Underhook. Boom. Once I got him underhook there, okay, I could come behind and push him this way, or I come now this way. This. Okay. Once I come this way, he only got one line to punch me under here now because I got to show this arm. But I'm not going to even let him get that off. No no so I push him with my arm at the same time. Remember, thigh to thigh. My thigh comes to his thigh. It starts at the side of his thigh, but now, and he's down. That That's simple. It starts at the side of his thigh. It ends up at the front of his thigh, the back of my thigh. To the front of his thigh. It could be the back of my thigh to the back of his thigh, the back of my thigh to the front of his thigh, and the front of my thigh to the front of his thigh. Right. For certain problems. The video okay. promoting this uh episode on IG, you see the instructor with me, and that's the same thing he's doing. He's reaping me thigh to thigh. Right, right, it's exactly. So thigh to thigh. Just remember that. So once again, uh let's say. You took karate classes. He punches with his hand. Karate hand? Or no, no, oh. punch with the regular hand. Okay. I go, hoy! Right. Well, now you circle that. You just mm. want to take control of that arm. You control that arm. So once again, he punches. I go, hoy! And bring it down. My hand to my chest. This hand still comes up to protect me, and so he eats. After that, I circle my hand around to his neck, and I step around I, we hop around but i step around thigh to thigh do not go your ankle to ankle or no shit like that thigh to thigh lock your foot in so he goes over that fulcrum turn your other foot out he goes down that easy okay can we do that one more time i'm gonna put the camera lower mm -hmm. and uh, maybe throw me from right here so they can see the thigh from back. From, you know what I'm saying? So with you in front of me like this. Okay. So they can see that thigh, thigh, thigh. So he's throwing the punch. Doesn't matter how. So he's throwing the punch in my face. 
his back to, to me. You can see, so I go under, I catch. When he catch that underhook right there, I pull talking. that to my chest yeah, yeah. and that locks his elbow. Yes. Or if I do the overhook, it's still, still at his elbow. And this hand comes up to his head. You can't really see my hand here, but my that. elbow is hitting. You've seen that on the other angle. I come around to his neck. Now, this is what he wants you to see. I step thigh to thigh. I can either, and we're going to do this on the next one, step back of thigh to back of thigh this way. Yes. That's what we're going to do next. But this first one, and that's called a uh, fulcrum draw or so, or a reap, mm -hmm. okay, depending on how we do it. This one, I come around, so I hop around yeah. and put the back of my thigh to the back of his thigh this way, and I bring him down. Boom. He goes over, I put my knee on his belly and begin to attack or knee behind his shoulder or control his hand yeah. and attack him or whatever it is I got to do, okay? That is called a front fulcrum throw. Front fulcrum throw. I got him here. Basically, I got him here. There's a different way you can do it, right? And I come around that way, and he goes over that. That's basically what that is, okay? Um, next is the rear fulcrum throw. The difference between the fulcrum throw and a reap, just so you know, you can see it clearly here, is a reap is a kick. It's my thigh against his thigh, but I'm actually lifting and kicking back yeah. the throw. A fulcrum throw, just and, and that works more on his legs. Fulcrum throw works on his chest. I place the fulcrum down between his legs. I want my heel, if possible, to be past his heel. You see, I had to move his legs to so keep his balance there, right? One second, but you want to turn like this so we can see where your legs are going. Okay, so, yes, yeah, so it's thigh to thigh. Take I stay space. there. I, I take his space. He doesn't regain that space. I put my foot down flat and I work on his chest. So I push his chest down. His body circles around this fulcrum. And he goes over. That's simple. Very simple. That's simple. So the camera has to be down. So we can see foot placement. Our, our producer, uh, Amanique, is not here today. Yes. So. We'll send her some love and shouts out. And Balagoon D, uh, who helps out sometimes, he's gone to get him some grub. So, so from here, you can take a seat. Okay. When you do this one, remember, he strikes or whatever. How I get to control his arm doesn't matter. One arm controls his arm. One goes around his neck or to his chest or whatever. The push here is going to be on his chest. When I come with the fulcrum, don't do this like people do. That is strength against strength. And if you're strong, you're going to lose that engagement. Also, y'all, this is unison. This is what's happening. This right. is push, pull pulling. Up. This is pushing. Yes. My arm, they can't see the arm, but I'm pulling the arm that I got yeah. controlling this arm. I'm pulling that. I'm pushing time. against his chest or his neck. And this foot, it comes up thigh to thigh. The back of my thigh to the back of his thigh. Can't fight that. And I place my foot down. He's already ready to go. Boom. I push him down. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, that's That's how you do that. Okay. So that's the foot placement. Go go again so they can see the feet so I can okay. talk through the feet slowly. One more time. So I have his arm. The other hand's around his neck. Okay. This one, it kicks outside. So I throw my knee up. Just like you shooting the knee. And I bring it down my foot between his legs. I want my heel past his toe. If you feel our balance, that means you need to bring this heel out more to towards his foot. Which is bringing me back further. And then you just take him down, push his chest, pull his arm, he goes down. Okay? That's the rear fulcrum. Instead. First one was front foot. You, you can bring it up now. First one was front fulcrum. This one, rear fulcrum. But it's the same energy. You just bring your leg back and out to the side and place it there 
and that becomes the fulcrum that his body has to follow. One of the hardest things for people to get on this one is to take the person's space, to, to start training yourself to do that. You don't want to move around him. You want to move through him. And that's what people, when they learn this, a lot of times they screw up. They will go around the yep. leg. Yep. You get you ain't taking the space. Taking the space is I come close yeah, to him no, and then I press yeah, down. Moving up. And that's and see how bent he is? That's because I've taken his space and he can't regain it. The body wants to regain the space. That's my pleasure. It's fighting to try to regain it, but by the time that happens, he's down. That's the pain. Okay. So he was trying to escape the pain of going down and hitting his back and possibly his head. He could not escape it. Mm -hmm. But he will try to. And that's the beauty of it. It's why he's trying to do that. He ain't trying to regain his balance. He can't because I've taken his space anyway. You can even take it down. He can't hurt you. He ain't thinking about hurting you at the time. He ain't thinking about pulling his tool no. at the time. You have a captive audience at that point. Right? <laughs> and he's going to go down. It's like, oh, shit, what do I do? You fall. That's what you're gonna do. <laughs> okay. Um, once again, an another way you can get into that. Uh, say he chokes, and people get really just terrified. If I he ain't push me against nothing, I'm okay. All I got to to actually get out of this choke, if if because he's gonna push me back into something. Mm -hmm. But if I got free space, all I do is. Make sure he can't move forward with his hands. Go ahead, push. No, sir. Choke him. No, sir. He can't. I, I, I got one finger right here, y'all. That's not, you don't want that finger right That's here. That's a choke. You go, and he's, about, he's pushing. You plant your hand, go right there. He can't go no further. You're free <laughs> to, to, to keep that right 100. Biggest, baddest man you can win with your finger. Keep that 100. And of course, you don't want to leave your finger out there so you take it. Yeah, take it yeah, away you from you. Take your gotta, ah! you take it away, you got to come to your waist. <laughs> and then you got to exactly, exactly. <laughs> And go back out with something else. So, so now, but that keeps him from the choke. And when you say, hey, what, what are you trying to do? <laughs> you do that, what, what's going on? What's, what's happening? What's what's happening? <laughs> right. So you can stop it that way. For this technique, I'm going to not do that. He does it here. And I... I'm the karate man, remember? Mm -hmm. So I'm high. Breaks it. High. And I'm back in where I was supposed to be. And I just take that step. Same thing again. Same thing. Right here. Okay. Uh, another thing, if he's choking, we'll say you a wide karate, you, uh, uh, what do you call it? Go to real man. Mm -hmm. So I go, high. Oh, okay. That's a little different. Right. <laughs> right. Possibly. So I'm here. Make sure you turn your shoulder at the same time. You got to use your hip. And once I, once I do that, then I'm on the other side. Bring this around to this hand, this cover to his oh. neck, and now I'm over here, thigh to thigh. Oh, you gotta remember, it works either way. Remember, thigh to thigh, he goes down. Okay. You and of course, I, if he's choking me, I'm not gonna be hoy, but that's just let you if know. If you hoy, you hoy. Right, if you hoy. Karate, you know, what I'm saying? If you know, they, they go to room. Hey, it works for you. Do your thing. Do now, your I told thing. you, and he was in here, I think, last time we shot Stan McKinney. Stan could use go to There you go. And Kempo. That's smooth. I'm going to rewatch this whole thing after. Can you take your turn? That's smooth. All right, cool. I'm going to rewatch this whole thing after. Please do. Just remember, five to five. That is the easiest way to get those full controls off and other throws. And it work. It, it does the weight distribution. It doesn't matter how, how heavy that person was. You can use that. Now I'm about to throw him with a wheel throw. Oh shit! And that, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so wheel throw is the highest throw and hardest throw we can do, right? Good one. Uh, I've been I allowed this one student William to throw me with the wheel throw because I was throwing people. He's like, man, that is incredible. I said, well. You know, you can feel it. I let him throw me. And he was strong as hell. So much so, my feet were touching the ceiling when he threw me. And I said, why did I? As I'm, as I'm going, I said, why did I let this big dude, really, he's new, throw me like this? Because he ain't going to have no type of, you know, not throw me hard. Right, right. He's getting it off. And it's, boom! And I said, and that's the wheel throw. 
<laughs> I was down there for a little while. <laughs> I had to regain my composure. I always tell people in the old days, that's how I learned how to side fall. The wheel throw. The wheel throw change. Was so he wasn't getting the side fall. I said, well, he's going to get it. <laughs> and so I kept, boom! Boom! <laughs> and I'm like, he either going to get it or he's going to die with it, so he's going to get it. <laughs> the old days when we was training on cement with fake that fake grass yeah, put out in the back right, of a, yeah. a, a shop. He in a shop. <laughs> In the garage, y'all. Right. You can tell me I ain't dedicated. You know he is, but I, I'm dedicated, y'all, just so y'all ain't know. Yeah, we were in there and it was cold, and so they got butane lighters oh on. Oh my god, shit. we about to pass out. All right. Yo, <laughs> hey, yeah, he was willing to teach us in that environment. So he's crazy enough. Yeah, we want to learn, but he like, okay. <laughs> he wild. Y'all, he wild. Yeah. Got my son in there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so, let's do it. All right. So um remembering thigh to thigh uh I'm another thing you. with the so you've seen hip throws i'm sure yeah. that if your back's hurting you're not going to be able to affect the hip throw so you can but you can always adjust it so you you're in here and you say god oh that hurt my back just put thigh to thigh uh. you saw his body move so you say oh i can't get my hip in there it hurts Thigh to thigh. First of all, if you hurt, don't even try to hip throw. Ooh, like this pose. Okay. Like you can see that thigh right there. Yeah. So I tried to do the hip throw. I, oh, my back. And you may have hurt your back a little bit and just realize it hurt now. Mm-hmm. You say, shit. Go thigh Ooh. to thigh. Take just right shoot back. it right back. Ready to fall. ready to go over. And I that one I stepped with because he going to go over hard on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was deep. <laughs> because I was doing the hip throw, that puts your hips deep. Yeah, and then when I step that. my foot there too, Woo! I don't want to need it to snap. So and, I had to move. And I realized snap. too, ball from that, I'm already ready to go that way too. Like yeah. I could just fall that way too. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm here. If I wanted to, I could take you that way. Yeah. That's the and that on that. That's the next thing I'm going to show you all. Um, the walkover. Ah, okay. He punches. I'm here. Boom. Right. Remember, throw that elbow or throw a punch, whatever it is. You're going to throw, okay? And say, I go, he, he, he pops it out of the way. He pops it. I pull his arm. So I'm on this side now. So you say, shit, you're on this side. Well, how am I going to do this? How, how am I going to do this? <laughs> Come up. I'm trying to make sure you fall on the mat. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. yeah so right it. here. Yeah, yeah, I got you. All right. So I got him on this side now. Hold that to your body. This you don't have to worry about. You're holding this device and you don't have to worry about him turning, but you want to put him down. So remember, thigh to thigh. This time when I go thigh to thigh, my thigh slams, my back of my thigh slams into his front thigh, I'm and mean. then I put my foot on this side. So yeah, yeah, you're going to fall hard. Right? <laughs> so normally when we train it, we just go thigh to thigh and bring the foot around. So I bring my thigh and I place my foot on the side of his foot. He already falling. Let me bring this down so you can see the foot placement. It is beautiful, man. It's taking you to something else. Before. Remember, thigh to thigh. So I'm on this side. Remember, I got to that side because I was on the inside. Say he punches. I'm, I'm here. He punches with that other hand. What, what I punch or elbow, he knocks it out the way, though. Now, this hand comes up. They can't see come that. down, come down. But yeah, let me bring this up first. So remember... He punches. I did the karate hand or whatever. This hand. And when I go here, he knocks that out of the way. I don't fight that. This hand that was here, it comes off of his arm and comes here behind my arm, uh, under my bicep. I grab his arm and I pull it to the side. Now, I pulled it to the side. I got it to my chest. Now, this foot. I skip in, I skip towards him, and I slam my foot into his thigh, and I put my foot on the side, I'm trying to hold him up so he don't fall. <laughs> uh, I put my foot on this side. So remember, put your, I'm just gonna go softly with my thigh. Thigh, and still going foot, down. and he goes down. Going down. If I go hard, like I, I would, that's thigh, and whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That sorry about that. So. I don't want to break shit up. You don't want to do I go soft. I go to your foot. Yeah. See, he goes down. Probably got too much. I'll show you right about now, y'all. He ain't been back on the mat in a while. <laughs> this shit a little heavy right now. So it's here. 
step on the side of his foot, he goes down. His placement is perfect, y'all. And you just need a little bit of energy, okay? Thigh down. And then after he's down like that, stomp on his thigh. I mean, his ankle. Break that shit off, or you can kick it out. You really don't have to, though. He's down anyway. And then you can stomp your knee. See, people don't, don't break out like of that. Y'all want to stop the head, kick him in the head, kick him in the head. That ain't going to stop me from getting up or pulling right. a tool or nothing. Head is hard as hell. Especially mine. My mama took me. That. <laughs> so that is, remember, thigh against thigh. That's called a walkover. Thigh against thigh. Step. That's a walkover. Um, front reap. Not front reap. Front pull control, rear pull control. Right. Those are the three that I want you to work on. Fulcum throw plants, the reap kicks. Right, so you're doing fulcum throws. Okay. Yeah, Lord. So front fulcum throw. That means he comes over to the front of me. Rear fulcum, and I'm attacking the front of his body. Yeah, Rear fulcum throw, back of my thigh to the back of his thigh, throw down. Front fulcum throw, back of my thigh to the front of his thigh, throw him down. Uh, front, side, that's all of now you see what I was saying about you, why you want that hip mobility because you are doing a lot of turning yes. of the hips. So you want to be able to have Whether that. Whether you're getting thrown or thrown. Yes. You want to be able to have that. And then walk over is kick the inside of his thigh. Yes. The other ones I'm on the outside of his thigh. This one, the back of my thigh to the inside of his front thigh. And then step my foot yes. to the other foot. And that locks that. And well, I'm gonna tell you the way my old man should do it. Oh, and we're gonna do it. It's, it's oh, thigh, 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 and then he go in deep in his thigh, Ooh. and you, you just kind of flip over that. And it's just nasty. <laughs> so I, I don't go that deep, but you don't have to go that deep. The first one, though, thigh to his thigh, and then when you put the foot down, put it on the outside of his foot. And let me you're taking the space. You do. You with your wife training is if you go thigh your thigh to her. Knee, you're gonna pull her over because she's lighter in most cases, or you're stronger than her. But make sure you're doing the technique properly so when you do run into somebody, it's gonna work. Because the thing is, when you don't go thigh to thigh, he just go to my knee, I can move that, right? And, and then it's, it's whole nother point. But when you thigh, I can't, I, I can't move right. that. So everything's up close and personal, right? Thigh to thigh, I can't get away from as I can't get away. But if he didn't go that deep, if he was that just this deep, right? I'm just gonna move that, and now we tussling. Right. We lock it up like that. And that's, I, I can mobilize it all the time. You don't go deep enough, you just gonna hop around. Yep. And I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. So that just lets you know you gotta go deep. You gotta go deeper. So put your men out there. Don't get told that. That's the worst thing you wanna get told. That, that's really you don't tell, have to all told that. tell me a lot of things. <laughs> I don't wanna be told deep. that. I wanna know that I'm already doing that. So right. here, and that's so that's in light and in. <laughs> All aspects of life. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. So make sure thigh to thigh. Okay. So important. I'm, t I'm like, why? But why, why I can't? Get, oh, I'm struggling with it. Mm -hmm. And it's because you just not deep sink. Right. You're trying to do this. Um, it's hard about to do take me growing weight. <laughs> you're trying to do ankle, and and that and that's not working. In fact, he can just <laughs> slam his ankle to the back of my knee. I mean, his knee to the back of my knee. Right. And, and now, now, now I'm off balance. <laughs> So this is, and, and, or, or people do this, they extend trying to pull. Yeah, all you that. You can't wind up the throat. Right. Don't it's cheat. just thigh to thigh. Don't dog. cheat the technique. Yeah. Trying to wind up. Wind up really works. Yes. Strip is not the way you want to do these techniques, man. No. It's just no. not what you want to do. And a lot of times you meet people, they're stronger than you, and now you're frustrated. Talking about these techniques don't work. No, the way you're doing it. It doesn't work. You're right. This technique, yours, you gotta, you gotta get in close, thigh to thigh. The final throw, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Got nothing to do with thigh. <laughs> it's got something to do with hips. Awesome. Yeah. We just connected to the thigh. Right, hip bone connected to the thigh bone. <laughs> so now, this one, and this is great for. Larger dudes against women. All right. Is your he's trying to grab you. You grab him. Hug mm -hmm. him. Hug him. Show him love. He's trying to show you violence. Show him love. 
<laughs> so he's trying to grab or punch or whatever, but he's trying to grab. I grab him. I lower myself. You okay? No, I just like when that So happens. I'm here. My the side of my head goes into his solar plexus. I hug around his waist. That's changing levels, right? But yes, so I, I go low here. I, I would move to now from here. This ain't enough. This, from, from that. this is a great throw. I'm glad now you know. pull his hip to your hip, or you short his hip may go to your chest. I mean, how short you are, but you want to close all this space. This space cannot be here. You want it closed. And when you do that, and when you pull him to you, I'm gone. He's gone. <laughs> I'm gone. Now, two ways to do this. One, once I'm here, I don't want to keep slamming my head, but that, that's bad. Yeah. Once you pull him in here, you step your foot between his legs, and you pull him as close as you can and step your foot between. That's one way. That's the most common way. The other, I'm not going to throw you like this because you're going to hit that ground. But you're here, you step this foot to the outside. Oh, yeah. And you take him down. Okay. Once That's again, easy, I'll go. So, he's, go he's going for the grab. Or whatever. Snap, well, boom! Up. I'm down. That hits his body. Yeah, that's a blow right there. Blow, and blow. you keep that momentum going. You wrap around. You pull his hips to you. Step between. He goes down. And stomp. now you can stomp or run. It don't look beautiful. It's very effective. And that's it's called a hip press takedown. But it can be very beautiful. And the reason why it's not actually a throw, that's a takedown, is because the pain in his back that makes him. Right. It's manipulation. So I am, um, a few fine points, pulling this to me, and I'm pushing my head up, but I, I don't go up like this. I push my head into his body. I'm going to grind and push through as I pull here. See, he's dead. You okay? Yeah, I want them to yeah, see the rock from, uh, from this side. See how your arms are. I'm clapping my hand. Don't do this to yourself. You can get your fingers broken. Clap your hand behind his back. Or if he's really wide back, you can make an S grip. That means I grab my fingers and pull. My head is in his solar plexus. It pushes up and back. Well, up and forward, excuse me. And I pull back with my arms. And he's going to fall by step between. Okay? Don't be afraid to. That's a. That's a good spot where his head at. I don't have anything. What I'm going to do? He can't get punches off. And then once you really train it, you're going to realize this is boom, boom. So it ain't like I'm going to be able to like, uh, figure out something right there. You're going right. to the ground. That's what you're going Yes, about. you're going to the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like you're using gravity against them. Absolutely. Absolutely. You use that are perfect for how I'm built. <laughs> yeah, good. And we'll be learning tosses. There you go. There you go. So, um, what was that movie LL Cool J was in where he would be like hiding in the couch the whole time? Hiding the couch. I'm not familiar with a uh, very very few uh, LL Cool J movies. I'm hiding in the couch. Was it a comedy? LL hiding. Hiding in a couch. Hey yo, we learning tosses. Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, we were. I ain't tossing nobody. <laughs> <laughs> That's called yeah throws and takedowns. Yes, yes sir. Yes sir. But yeah, you can toss that mother around your crib, you right down the stairs. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. So, once again, and depending on, I mean, okay, if a person is in your at your doorstep talking crazy, and mm -hmm. you're in your house, there's nothing wrong with you doing that. <laughs> and he trips down the stairs, and then you coming at him. That's so you ain't got to get fancy. That's you, Bible shit right there. You got off balance. Don't talk shit to me around stairs. Right, stairs, <laughs> edges, stairs, that kind of stuff. Clips. Don't you sit the kitchen shit while you talking? Don't you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't, I don't like hell. You just made my technique easy, right? So if it's there, use it. Exactly. <laughs> so remember, hand in this the side of your head, not the front of your head. You know how to hear, but the same because technique. head, but right, it's a head. It's actually. What exactly what it is? I'm driving that into him. If because of the height difference, I hit his sternum, cool. Because I'm still gonna use that to off balance him after, and that's gonna stun him. It's not gonna it's not gonna do like the solar plexus does. Right. It's gonna do something. It's gonna do something. If, or if you really short, 
and you down here, you can hit the liver. That might be so. You know, boom, and then pull them in. Mm, you know, it's, I figured if I'm fighting somebody and I'm sure enough to hit their liver with a headbutt, I got to take this motherfucker down because that's a that's giant. Job. Yeah, if you just right there <laughs> at his liver, oh my goodness. <laughs> That was a big dude. So <laughs> you gonna take him down, take his big behind down. Cause once gravity, physics is gonna take over all of that. He's gonna fall. It's true. Yeah. What do you say about the bigger they are? And, and uh, somebody big like that getting taken down by somebody small, much smaller than them, that's also demoralized. I mean, that's like, you yeah. gotta take advantage of that because they ain't gonna he gonna just be demoralized ever. Oh, he took me down. I'm finished. No, no, no. You got to take advantage of that. In combat, demoralization is big. Yes. Because that's a pause. I mean, a lot of times, you would attack your enemy's food supply because they demoralize. Then you attack them physically. Mm. They think about their stomach. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. Mm. They ain't bringing their A game. You are. Remember last episode, I was talking about the famine is supposed to hit here? No, something to think about. Make sure you got your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you got your supplies. Get the supplies yeah. right. Urban survival preparedness. Is, uh, is that the name of the book? Is it the USPI? So it's, it's, a, it's the US, USPI's Urban Survival Preparedness Institute. I'm one of the co chairs of in that. Atlanta. And so it's USPI Self Defense, uh, USPI, I believe it's USPI Urban Self Defense Manual. Mm -hmm. So that is. Uh, and that continues to be, I think, my biggest seller. That's good. I'm no like, pictures <laughs> in it. Nothing. It's just pure knowledge on how to survive out here. How to survive the urban apocalypse. Right. Now, now that, yes, surviving the urban apocalypse, yes. Uh, book one and two. Uh, book two, they would not allow me to make a hardback. You can only get that that one in uh, soft cover. That should tell you something. And you wonder why. But... And as you read it, you, you'll see why. Um, but and I tried to fight that, appeal it. They they wouldn't let me appeal it, and they were angry. <laughs> I said, I know you own Amazon. <laughs> I know you own Amazon. Sir, you're not going to uh, do the hard copy. Be happy you got the uh, digital copy. I said, happy? You know how many books I've written? I, I can just write the same information in another book, and I ain't got to go to y'all. Amazon has a stranglehold on people if you want your books to, to, to reach a large number of folks. Mm -hmm. They have a stranglehold. They say, we don't want to let this out. And it came out during the pandemic. And during the pandemic, I had a sickness called the Rona mm -hmm. that, that had decimated the world, right? And they weren't. I said, I didn't say coronavirus. <laughs> I said the Rona. And they weren't playing. You ain't doing no no type of finding loopholes. You're not playing uh, with the word. Yeah. They weren't having it. Yes, yeah. Oh shit, that's what they was talking about. My pants blend in look like I'm disappearing in the in the background. <laughs> oh, I don't need to talk like that too. Oh shit. It, it didn't be cold when I throw you. <laughs> I'm like, man, you threw him out of existence. <laughs> That'd be dope. All right, so let me see. Baba looks like you lost some weight. If that's not too personal, oh, we've been talking about that, yeah. So you're I right, lost, huh? I lost you're sixty right. pounds. Yeah, you're right, you're right here. I lost sixty pounds. Just bounce back, though. I, you know, I, I don't want to lose no more, yeah. except the, the little bit of gut I got left. But yeah, uh, I, I watched some of my old shows. My gut was way out here. I said, "This is just ridiculous." <laughs> just ridiculous, you know. We'll be and, and because also, so and, and and I knew better. It was. From eating, I don't even eat heavy, which is eating the wrong, a bunch of sugars. Because I know better, if everything does fall down, you're going to be doing more running and humping with a 50 pound pack or whatever it is than fighting. Right. And so you got to be in the physical condition to be able to survive. Before you ever get to talking about fighting the, that's, the enemy. That's why I appreciate you for so, putting us through tests. And when we go through tests, it's physically demanded and you deplete it before you ever do any technique. Like that's one right. thing that Bob put us through a lot of, you know, say physical training and then do your technique. 
at the end of class, now do you take me? And you, when you're in front of everybody and you knew and you're nervous and you just learned it, now do the technique. Right, right, exactly. When your eyes for somebody coming and you don't know they're right there and you don't know who's coming at you, now do the technique. Right. Stress now, and the rest. Uh, I mean, Pistol said, My Sharona. Now, that may have worked. They probably got me there, too. Yes, Mr. Z, My Sharona. Them say that, no, you, you can't. That was a good one, yeah, yeah, My Sharona. I'm talking about the song. The song, they found that it uh, affects your mind and it, you know. Uh, he said, okay, wow, congrats. Yes. And I said, too, when I lost the weight, if it worked, I would tell people, and it did, it was the Rise Coffee. Okay. Not doing a commercial from them, but it, it does work. When you use that as opposed to regular coffee. And I don't do, sh it allowed me not to even want sugar no more in my coffee. Wow. So even when I do regular coffee, I don't use sugar. So mm -hmm. my wife said, make me some coffee. I said, dear, you sure? And I make it. I said, make it the way I. She said, fine. And when she drunk, she said, okay. She got up, left the room. Wow. I know she in there, you know, putting sugar in her coffee because I don't use sugar no more. So the rice coffee is so good. The Baba Bala Goon has really gotten off of the sugar from using and, and everything, and he's lost weight. We don't want to do a commercial for him, just in case they're thinking about, you know, having Warrior Class as, <laughs> you know, sponsoring our show. Right, right. Yeah. You know, we really appreciate your yes. product. So yes. And I can talk more on it, Rise, if you are exactly. sponsoring, See, yes. This one ain't showing his face, but it actually shows his whole face. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and, and when we were talking about earlier, when you don't want a person to tell you, ever tell you a man to go deeper, <laughs> stuff, you actually grow uh, at least another four inches. I won't say where unless Rise fades. Shit. Everybody get ready. Rise. Get ready. Rise. 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 No. And that I am BSing about that. Do not get that. Get mad at me. By the bar, Bill Gates the bar Rise. Right. 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 Do not get mad at me and be like you, you with a sad face. <laughs> I'm I'm joking about that. Over the bought out rise. Oh, right, wow. right, oh, right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> shit, my wife find that shit in the bought out selling my shop. Get this here, this works for you. No, so oh, no. Uh, the only thing that works for that is genetics. If you ain't got the genetics, I'm sorry. He's sorry for you. I mean, he ain't like I'm. You know, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm not my son. <laughs> my son went to the bathroom with me when he was little, and uh, he said, "Daddy." Uh, these are like uh, sausage and hot dogs. You have a sausage, I have a hot dog. I said, no, I had a, I had a little a, a sad face. I said, no, son, you have a sausage. I'm a hot dog. So, hey, you know, uh, I'm not my son. When he was born, the, the nurse said, oh, my God, he is a boy. Oh, shit. Yes. And I looked and said, is this real? Like, damn. So that's him. Don't get the big head, son. You know this is the truth. But I had to teach him a man is more than that. Right. Because he, you know, yeah, the, the women love me because I said, yeah, if yeah. a woman love you, believe me, if she loves you because of that, they ain't going to last. You see Michael Shea standing up like, what I need a job for? Like, I got the DS. <laughs> Michael Shea. <laughs> Michael Shea got to stand up. The guy that did the black oh, dude Saturday Night Live, uh, the, 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 the weather with the white, he tried to get the white dude to say racist stuff and catch him and stuff and stuff. He got, oh, he has a great stand-up. Great stand-up. Great stand-up. Because most, well, because I would say most actors who were comedians, they were better actors than they were ever stand-up folks. Well, he was always a comedian. He just... Uh, no, I'm just saying, like, so Kevin Hart, I mean, he ain't great actor either. Right. Kevin Hart's movies are better than stand-up. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Whereas you got Dave Chappelle's stand-up is better than his movies ever. All right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I want to say something on that too. Where did it become that when they when they they use Dave as the poster child for not wearing a dress? When Dave wore a dress in Robin Hood Men in Tights, right? And I got the pictures. So for my students, when they was new student comes in and they talking about that kind of thing that they never sold out, I send them. You got an email? Mm -hmm. I send them the pictures. I posted it before too because. Where did that lie come from? Right. Anyway. We was talking about that last night. And, uh, you know, I didn't know. Um, so 
because I under, we were just, just real quick, just in the conversation, I was just like, you know, some comedians, we didn't look at it when Martin Lawrence did it. We didn't look at it like, man, what you doing dressing up like a woman? We didn't look at it when. Well, shit, back in the days, Flip Wilson. When Flip Wilson, I was about to go to Flip. Flip Wilson won. Geraldine. Geraldine, Wanda, and uh, whoever Martin did. Those three women, we didn't look at it like that. Now, Wanda was just gross. Right. Jamie Foxx, oh my God, just, that was gross. Was that. But that's the, that's, you understand, I'm not that type of funny. That's not my type of funny, but I understand it. Mm -hmm. Versus, so I can understand. Like it's a, it's a uh, global conspiracy? No, no, I'm just saying, like, that. I can understand them doing that and not seeing nothing wrong with it. I can understand each, so I'm going to say that even Dave Chappelle, when they all on the Robin Hood thing, and they dress like that. To get inside of As a young comedian, I could see him doing that and not even thinking, this is some bullshit. Right. And, but when you come with a dress, just you, for this scene, we want you to do the dress, you bigger now, and you be like, uh, I don't really, I don't think that's going to be funny. And then you're like, no, I just want you to do this, though. Okay, so, man, <laughs> now you got to yeah. think. You well, know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's number one. They think it sells. Right. And, they, and and it's demoralizing. So right. Now and you was different now. You you see people. you see some I always tell people you see some white comedian men putting the dress too. Right. It demoralizes men. Right. Uh and if you will allow them to do that, you allow them to do anything. That's my whole thing. But I, right. I'm not into the Illuminati. I don't right. care about that. But if you god damn it. Well, ain't, ain't shit about the Illuminati out here. But a man, we walk down the street, and the man say, hey, put this on. We got punked. Exactly. And I think he knows that look. now I can make you put on the dress. I can make you do anything. In the prisons in Illinois, well, in Cook, well yeah, Illinois, not Cook County Jail. I can do it. But in the prisons, they make men, after they raped them, they know, okay, I can do anything if he allow this. You know, he didn't fight. They make them for the you got a 10-year sentence for your whole 10 years, 20 year life sentence. You are wearing a dress, and so they cut, they get you the big top and you wear like a dress, short dress. They take a mop head and make you wear that, and they take Kool-Aid and make you wear lipstick, and you cannot use the bathroom ever standing up. If you do, they will kill your ass. So now they have totally turned you into a so-called woman. Lord. In the prison system, because you allowed them to take that one step. When I was locked up, a dude comes in the room. I had a, a watch on. They didn't take my watch, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't take a couple of things from me because they were scared. Of, they were terrified of me. It's crazy. I don't understand why. So they, they, I have my watch, and the dude comes in the room. Hey, how you doing, Muhammad? My my last name at the time was Muhammad. How you doing, Muhammad? Why don't you bless me with that watch? So you get your ass out. Bless me with the watch. Mm -hmm. Saying it with a smile on his face. So after they like, well, sure. You know, this nigga's scared. Then they say, okay, uh, Muhammad, why don't you bless me with your booty hole, Muhammad? Yeah, right. That's how they, that's so now I mean, get your ass out of here. In fact, when I mean, get out of here, next thing I know, other brothers were running up. What's going on? What you, what you doing? Mm -hmm. what you, you, don't, you don't mess with him. I was so well respected in there because of my skill. And because when I went in, I went in as a danger to law enforcement. Eugene Mason asked, but what do you think of Dr. Bobby Price? He's in Atlanta. I just did a, his 14-day herbal detox. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I don't know him like that. Dr. Bobby Price. I'm a Nikki would know exactly what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, I'm sure she does. He's in Atlanta, too, so I'm mm -hmm. sure she knows. Gregory Jones says, is it less threatening the white male? Yeah, to see black men I'm sure. It's demoralizing, too. Right. And, but this is another thing. It's funny to some type of people. Like some white boys get, you know, white men get, it's more committed to them to and, do gay and, things. And now, two F's, uh, and it seems to have very little to do with women at that point. Yeah, it's not. Definitely so got to do with I always tell when, when when you do that to men, they, them men ain't acting nothing like no woman I ever knew. Right. So it's not about woman, yeah. it's to demoralize you. You're not acting like a man either. Right. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's to demoralize you. Hey, I made him put on this dress. Now I can take other steps. That's just the beginning step. That's the beginning step, right? And then they do other stuff to you. And and they know I got you, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm not, and don't take it wrong, I'm not saying anybody who got raped in jail 
I'm not tripping on you. But what I'm I am saying is that they use that to test your heart. Right. It's an act of war. European uh soldiers and warriors have long done use rape as a tool against their enemy. Because they know if they if they do that to you, they demoralize yeah, exactly. you. And in fact, and they meet you again on the battlefield, they know you did not. Going to hardly be looking in his face. Yeah. I even heard when, when the dude, the serial killer, uh, are you gonna, you're wondering, are you gonna be raped? You absolutely fucking are. That's to bring fear into you. The whole time I'm thinking, I'm like, well, no, uh, I'm not gonna be raped. Mm, I'm not getting I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be raped. In fact, you let me out of here, I'm gonna kill you. That's what I'm gonna be at. Cause I mean, he's gonna kill me. He ain't gonna just rape me. Let me, after he done done that, he demoralizes now because rape is never about sex. So you don't care what you are, male, female, man, woman, you don't care. You, that, that's to demoralize, take your heart. You don't allow that, right? When I first moved to Atlanta, they had me on a panel with two cops, a psychologist, and somebody else. I think a preacher was the weirdest about rape they had hundreds of girls in this audience in this in this uh gymnasium and you talking to them and the cops are talking about let it happen don't fight back that's gonna make it worse i said ho oh. i cut them off i said bull shit and i started teaching on complicity so if he is joe and joe said he's gonna rape me and i allow that or if he said he's going to kill me, and I allowed that. I committed suicide, and he committed homicide. I'm not going to be complicit in my murder. You yeah, best sneak up on me. Yeah, but I'm not going to be so scared of you that I let you do shit to me. Yeah, you have to be willing to fight. And people say, well, you're, you're a man saying that. I'm a man with, with eight daughters, and I'm saying that yeah, you right now. That I teach them the same way, because why the hell else are we training? To just let somebody take from us? No. I was teaching. When, so when I, I taught those us that don't allow, I said the same thing. Hell no. They clapping for me like crazy. The police looking at me like, who is this? The preacher and the psychologist agreed with me. I'm thinking they're going to fight against me. Mm -hmm. The preacher may not say nothing. I don't know. But the psychologist is probably going to fight against he was with me. Mm. Like, hell yeah, you do. And I was shocked that the, the one cop, they, they pigs, but the one cop was a woman. It was a male, it was a man and a woman. And she was like, yeah, you know, don't fight back. Let it happen. I said, and I, I said to her, you got children? She said, yeah, I have three daughters. Do you teach your daughters that? And she was looking. I said, do you teach your daughters that? No. So why would you teach these people out here to just let it happen? And I have my ideas of why, you know, uh, it, it's good to have, in, in Atlanta, it's not much going on by way of violent crime. So it's good to let that happen. Women get raped. Now you got more violent crime to pad those stats. I, 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 stats. I hate to think that way, but that's how I felt about it at that time when they said it. And I still mm -hmm. feel that way. Like, yeah, that'll make your books look good. Mm -hmm. Come from a different angle. And then you come and stop the you know, catch the rapist. Right. That makes your books look good, but they don't do nothing for that woman or girl that got raped. She suffered mental damage. Or the boy who got raped. Before we be, be careful, before we do, I did want to bring this up in the news. It's a video out that this parent um, posed. Two teenage girls. They got they they're in a, a, a arcade. And what they did is they got their phone in front of the arc right there in front of the video game showing them playing the video game live right mm -hmm. you see these little girls playing a um, game and you see behind them they can't see this because they can only see the screen they, mm -hmm. behind them an old white man is looking in the game they're in one of them card games where you sit inside mm -hmm. so he can see them from the outside so you see him looking and i can't i, I can't bullshit you not he looked like he had a mask on almost. 
you know, the way they look out, oh, this is so thick that you mm. can't really see their eyes, that type of thing with the long, big forehead, curly, it looks just like a mask mm. with another white man. They looking, they looking, they looking. Finally, this motherfucker just goes on, goes in there, reach in there and touch her leg. And she yells, she screams, and they both of the little girls scream and they look at them. And who's say, filming this? They filming themselves. The little girls are filming themselves playing. And they the catch game. him on the thing. And they catch him. And so they, they the parents. Did post, anybody come? No. The girls, the girls didn't know what to do. Right, of course. They the scream. Yeah. He touched them. You see him touch the leg. Because she yeah. jumped out. She jumped back like this. He touched her leg on the camera. You see it. So she screamed, he, he leave out, and they keep playing the game. And you see him come back in behind them. Another man come behind him, and he's just sitting there, just looking at the girls, looking at the girls. And then they finally walk off. Another girl come, they friend, and they stay, they looking at each other. She's like, I recorded it. I recorded it. You know what I'm saying? And that was it. Oh, uh, I wish I'd have been there for them oh, girls, man. Man, man. when, when I was at the, at the mall, and I think I talked about this on here. Um, I'm at the mall by myself shopping. And yes. I see this dude with a camera and he's taking pictures of, of all these little black girls. Oldest one, probably 13, 14. He got them sitting on his lap and he's got uh, these reflective, you know, silver toes on his shoes. So he's catching them up on their skirt. And he's taking a picture, I know, taking a picture down his feet. I walk over there. Well, first I get the security guard. I said, uh, can you come with me because I'm gonna lay hands on this dude and I don't want you to see me lay hands on this white man and then you arrest me. She said, well, what do you do? I said, you know, we're taking pictures of the girl and taking pictures of up their skirts. I said, what? She walked over there and when I go towards him, I know she don't come with me. I grab him, get your arm out of here, grab him. I, he <laughs> runs off, and I tell the uh, girl, and she ain't the security guard didn't stop me. And then I tell the girls, look, he was taking pictures of you all with them silver toe shoes up under your skirts and everything. I said, you got freaks. Like she said, and one of the girls, Pe people like that? I said, yes, we people like that. So they, they didn't realize people like that. That was shocking to them, right? But they were looking shocked when I grabbed them. I said, he said he's going to make us models. I said, yeah, I bet. So... The, the security guard, she had ran up. I, I said, what are you what are you doing? Why, why'd you, you run? She said, he, he was a pretty pretty big guy. And I had to count because it's a woman. She's a woman, too. And she was probably 14 or 11. And so she was scared. And she, she only probably getting paid $10 an hour or something back then, right. if that. So I, I was like, okay. Uh, all right, so maybe, and I said, maybe she's looking to other employees. And left. I'm like, man, and I'm when I left, I'm looking for the dude. I'm like, he's chuckling back around. I'm gonna F him up. Y'all be careful. So have, watch yourself. Have a way to communicate for your children to communicate with you. If they be able to if they text you, yeah. star five, you know they're in danger. Well, so and, and and try to tell them to call. So this issue with the with the dude, Noxka, remember whatever, like Bloxka. Right. Remember, so I told them my, my, my children at home. They, they know what to get. And, they, and I said, I'm going to be there. So call me, though. Don't text me. You will. I'm doing a show. I'm not going to even look at the text. But halftime, I don't look at the text anyway. I look at the text maybe once a day, twice a day at, at the most. Call me if you need my help. Not text. So they knew. To do and my wife jumped in and said, especially something important. He did look like dude from the mask. That's funny. That's true. Who the, the 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 guy with the mask looked like the dude from the movie Mask? That guy with the mask. Oh, that's really movie. weird. Yeah, he did look like that. I started to show Noska's picture on here, but I don't want to snatch it down. Yeah, no, yeah, we 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 which is weird anyway, man. He got pictures of him with, with pistol talking about uh blocks making the blocks hot. It's just whack. Be like, careful of when the pistols so, don't hurt yourself. So watch yourself right when because you could hurt yourself. And and he's got a pistol with extended clip. You know those jam all the time. Mm. 
So if you have a pistol, by the way, do not get an extended clip. They will jam on you. Yeah. If you don't know how to clear, first of all, you should also know how to clear your firearm anyway if it jam. Uh, one of my students had an AR-15. We went shooting. Oh, my AR-15 is down. I can't use my AR-15. I said, let me see this. Let me see. <laughs> here, here, here you go. Oh! You just got to just, just know. And I, I said, well, you know what? The next time we go shooting, I'm going to teach drills on how to clear your 202. If you don't know something. Because all that's right, it doesn't exist. Right? And so you can own these firearms if you don't know those firearms. All right. All right, so the scary thing is my daughter are older. Now I, can, I can't be there all the time. Same, I'm always just keeping an eye on my phone. Yes, John, so I've got eight daughters and one son. Okay. Um, my son is 20, he'll be 21 in November. Wait, no, damn, he just turned 21, yeah. So damn. he's 21. Damn, I, I did get enough then. So he's 21. Uh, the daughter right under him is 15. That's Jamie. And then the baby will be a year next Saturday, which next Saturday we won't have a show because it's her birthday. So, unless you and Omni want to do the show, you know, which is cool. Uh, but I won't be there because it's her birthday next Saturday. Uh, but the child above him is Abiola, the one that this fool is stalking. She's 23. So I, I, I know what you mean when you say you can't always be there. Right. She's 23, and then it just goes up and up all the way to my oldest is 37. So I can't always be there. I got one daughter lives in Korea. And she's, no, she's not in the military. Uh, never was. She, she teaches. But she speaks fluent Korean and Japanese. Okay. She's in, in Korea. One is in Iowa. Hates it. She's trying to get back here. Mm. Hates Iowa. Uh, and so do my grandchildren who, who live there. You know, mm -hmm. children, they hate Iowa. Because they're like, ain't no black folks. Black, uh, the white folks racist as heck. And mm -hmm. So they, they hate Iowa. So Iowa, Chicago, and Atlanta. That's where So we're all over the place. Now, at one point, we were all in Atlanta. If he had said that and we all here in Atlanta, he already been visiting. Yeah. But they're, they're all over the place. So he can't kill the whole family anyway. You know, but but he's one person. Exactly. Let me make that clear. He's one person. Okay. Uh, I have his picture. I've studied him on my way over here. I built up a dossier on him on my way over here. So people, you know, think they can just say whatever I decided net. It's not, but but. There are people who live who take that kind of shit seriously. He also didn't give conditions. Right. He gave a threat. He didn't say, if you don't go out with me, then I'm going to, he said, I'm killing your whole family. You broke my heart. So I'm killing your whole family before I kill you. You got to be careful, man. So that is serious. And, you know, somebody, why did you go to police? What police? Yeah. Go to police and they'll be making her like she a hoe. And, and maybe they, they, you have firearms in your house? Asking me that kind of crazy question. When uh, they broke in our car, I said, get a police report, told my wife. She said, okay. She said, you sure? I said, go ahead, call them, get a police report. We'll we'll all be out there, you know? So I'm standing out there and she's out there. The police comes up. I said, don't touch the car, the, the car door is open. Shit all over the, the driveway. He doesn't ask us what happens to the car. He knows he's there on the car. He comes right to me and says, You got any firearms in the house, sir? I'm like, this punk motherfucker. I said, No, of course not. No, no. Got any 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 uh weapons on you? Oh no, sir. I'm like, he searches me, you're gonna see I got plenty. If he searches me, you know, so I'm not gonna allow, I'm not gonna well. I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to allow a search. I'm not going to, definitely not going to give my permission to be searched because you're here about our car being, and I said, hey, our car's broken in. What, what does that have to do with anything? Somebody, I have, well, I'm here by myself. I have to uh, get an assessment of everyone's mentality. 
So they get an assessment of the people who broke in my car mentality. You're not a detective, so why do you need to get an assessment of our mentality? Yeah. We're not, we didn't call you to set you up to do violence. We called you to get a police report. So, you know, fuck the police. No, we're not calling the police and then one of us end up getting shot. Yeah, no, we're going to handle that ourselves. He would wish after it's all said and done that we call the police. That's going to be his prayer if he can pray anymore. That's going to be his prayer. So I'm just letting y'all know I'm afraid for my life. Even through this, the whole time I'm trying to fight shaking. I, shaking. I know you felt the shaking through there when I grabbed you, right? So just, you know, just so you know, uh, I'm in fear for my life and I'm in fear for the lives of my wife and my children. Even the ones in, in, the one in Korea, I, everywhere, I'm in fear because, yeah. you know, he may drive me. Or fly to Korea and do something. It's hard to so rest with somebody's to tongue like that. It's hard, Man, it's hard to rest. You know, you know. Right, hard to rest. Uh, even if you show up, you may not be able to talk him down. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, y'all. Love y'all. Y'all be safe. Stay black or whatever it is that you may be. Um, now, C Y A A C A B. Why does that sound familiar? A C A B. What does that mean, 2F, real quick? Damn, that's infuriating. Never been to Iowa. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I've been to Iowa one time, and that's good enough. I don't know what CYA means. CYA. Chew, cover your ass. That's CYA. Oh, cover your ass. But ACAB. All cops are bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All cops are bastards. ACAB. Okay, I got you. Yeah, you're right. That's ACAB. <laughs> I like that one. They may even use that one. You know, cop talk. Hey, guy. Hey, buddy. What's going on? I look at everybody. ACAB. Hey. <laughs> ACAB. Now, I hope you don't know. All cop the bathrooms, huh? No, no. I meant all chickens are, 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 are bootylicious. Yeah, that's there you go. Anything, you know what I mean? But all right, y'all. Love y'all. Uh, she said she's not making it up. Okay, I got to. I, I need that one, though. Uh, all cops of bastard come can come in handy. ACAB, y'all, remember that? They know FTP. They know what that means. So just careful you now. Uh, yeah, we know FTP. FTP is more than is what you want it to be. There you go. F the police, free the people. And have your own thing. I had a friend that he yes. said, when people got his nerve, he'd do this. I said, man, why you always do that? He said, man, I'm saying, fuck you in my head. I said, <laughs> I like it. They don't have to know what you do. Now, you do it for yourself. when I used to work at Carson Perry Scott, I used to carry uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X in my pocket, right? Which is not an autobiography. Uh, Alex Haley wrote that. But anyway, I have it in my in my suit pocket. And the mother talking to me crazy. Uh, you're right. You, you, you right. I'm tapping that like, mm -hmm. goddamn it, saying Malcolm was right. <laughs> you got to have little stuff, man. That was right. right. Saying, keep you saying. Now, this here, that means Yabasta, <laughs> right? Which, which is a statement of revolution. I believe it's, it's like free the people, or whatever. It's not this, it's this. But, because my wife was like, we could use that. I said, no. Point and say your boss to your mother and see what happened to you. Your boss Your boss Right, exactly. Like, no. no. Like, my, this, I didn't do this. I did this. I remember one, we should do this. Let me forget you. This. <laughs> and my mother said, Adam, go to the store. And go get me some uh, peas and such and such and such, and such. I said, Ma, I just came from the store for you. She said, Yeah, I forgot. I need you to go back. I said, Like that, right? And she said, And, and get so and so. And I'm going here. And she came in the room. I said, <laughs> <laughs> and I go dance with the dad. She said, mm -hmm. yeah, I bet yeah, you did. Yeah, I yeah, felt, I felt yeah, you yeah, right, right, yeah. That's a moment you're talking. <laughs> you know, and she came in there, and my shit just. I then it broke my, my <laughs> got to dislocate my wrist. Trying to like I was doing something else. Yeah. Oh, bring back respect. Bring back respect. Man. <laughs> All right, y'all. Love y'all. Stay black, whatever it is you may be. Remember, thigh to thigh and a cab. Peace.